In the swamps and marshes of Alabama and northern Florida, there have long been rumors of a mysterious animal lurking in the water. The folk tales and the rumors speak of a slimy creature as long as a man's arm, with a body like an eel or a large snake, with moist gray skin spotted like the fur of a leopard, and with frills on either side of its face like some kind of giant marine salamander. As it turns out, that's pretty much exactly what this animal is. This rumored creature, long described anecdotally by locals, has now been formally discovered and described by scientists. They call it the reticulating siren, or the siren reticulata. It belongs to an amphibian family called the Sirenidae, or more commonly known as the sirens, which are entirely aquatic amphibians. The Sirenidae are a subgroup of salamanders, and due to them living virtually their whole lives in the water, they've evolved to lose their hind legs. Instead, their bodies have elongated into the shape of a serpent, with long, slender fins growing along the end of the tail. This tail is used to propel them through the water, like an eel, while their tiny forearms are used to scrape and scavenge and stabilize themselves along the ground. They don't have eyelids because they don't need to blink. They're always underwater, and so their eyes aren't at risk of drying out. But there is a protective membrane that's always over their eye. They also have strange frills on the side of their head. But these frills aren't for decoration. They're not for attracting a mate. These sirens have gills. And over time, evolution has turned their gills inside out, such that now they look like a lacy frill or a loose, spongy structure running along the posterior edges of their skull. And across its entire, gray, slimy body, there's a beautiful mosaic of spots that bear a striking resemblance to leopard spots. The creature, which is one of the largest species discovered in the U.S. in more than a century, has been described in a paper that was submitted to the journal Plus One. A co-author of the paper, a wildlife ecologist named David Steen, said, quote, what immediately jumps out about the reticulated siren that makes it so different from currently recognized species is its dark and reticulated pattern. It also seems as though they have a disproportionately smaller head as compared to other sirens, unquote. When he refers to a reticulated pattern, that uh, in scientific terms means a net-like pattern or a web-like pattern. The discovery of this amphibian almost didn't happen. Consider that the family Serenidea had only four known species. It was generally considered to be a species-poor family, and so there really wasn't an intensive effort to find uh, the fifth species, or the sixth, or the seventh, if they exist. Sean Graham was another author on the paper describing the reticulated siren and both he and David Steen had been searching for this amphibian as more of a, quote, passion project than as any kind of formal research project. They didn't even have university funding for this. It was literally just them going out in the Florida swamps on their own time to try and catch a few specimens. Another reason why the siren reticulata was so hard to find is because of its life strategy. These sirens live in dirty, muddy swamps and marshes, and that's pretty much the only place where they spend their time. They don't really ever come out of the water to walk around on land, where they might be easier to see. It took quite a bit of digging through the swamp mud and the marsh muck to actually get hands on some living specimens, so as to study them and enhance our understanding of life. This is kind of like pretty much every modern zoological discovery. If you want to find something cool and unknown in the animal kingdom, you're going to have to trek into the wilderness and get a little dirty. But that's all part of the fun. It's what science is all about.